Let me see here. Let me fix all these cameras. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's been a minute since I done been live. He tested a camera the first. Okay, hold on, Periscope. It's a little situation happening right there. Okay, YouTube. Let me see. All right, it's going to have to work. Oh, let me send it y'all a little more. Hold on, I can send to y'all, and I can send to y'all a little bit over there like that. How's that? That's going to have to work. What's up, people? So, um, let me tell you what happened and why we here on such an auspicious occasion. Um, so, believe it or not, I have been gone and traveling and whatnot, and I came back to clean out my refrigerator only to realize I had no food. Okay, only to realize, oh my god, there he is. You need some food in that refrigerator, boy. So I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I said, I'm gonna go to the farmer's market. I'm gonna go to the farmer's market and pick up a couple of items. Well, a couple turned into a couple turned into a lot, and I figured that y'all would probably want to know what I have, you see? So I said, okay, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm getting here and we can unbag some of this stuff and we can see what we got. Uh, we can unbag some stuff and we can see what we got. One thing we do have, we got food now, okay? This is the mascarpone cheese that I like. This. This is mascarpone cheese. I always have plenty of cheese. And then this one was um, 20 month aged Parmesan, $7 each. And then this was uh, some Pecorino Romano. This was some feta, $2.55 for this, okay? This is a good, what's this, almost 16 ounces? Let's see. What it weigh? Almost. This is uh, $2.55. Can't beat that. Then they had the sharp cheddar. This was $4.50. So I picked some of this up. I went to, I don't know if everybody's going to ask, where'd you go? Where'd you go? I went to the DeKalb County Farmer's Market. It's one of my favorites. Some of y'all might have seen me there because a lot of y'all stopped me to talk and stuff. Um, They have the best pasta to me. And the, the pasta, the dry pasta, it always end up having some Italian on it. When you can't really understand it, you know what I mean? Oh, I should put on my apron. Hold on one second. I didn't even think about it, Lord. I didn't even think about it. Ain't no sense... Ain't no sense in um doing this if we're gonna not if we're not gonna put a little piece of apron on, huh? Ain't no sense in doing it if we're not gonna put a little piece of apron, okay? Yes, we might as well put the apron on, huh? <laughs> Shopdariuscooks.com. What you saying, huh? What you say? ShopDariusCooks.com. Isn't that cute? I know. I know. I know. Don't you love it? Don't, don't you love it? You hungry? Let's make a snack, okay? ShopDariusCooks.com. Okay. Don't ask me. Sometimes I go to the grocery store and I buy stuff I really don't need. Please don't ask me why I went to the people's place and picked up lasagna sheets like I don't already have some in the cabinet. Don't worry about that, it's fine. And then I picked up a couple of nests of angel hair and a couple of nests of tagliatelle pasta. I'm gonna put this up as I talk to y'all, okay? That way we can get through it all because it's a lot to get through. I know. Okay. 
Let's see. You know, put this up too. This is the these are um pasta sheets. They're just ready to go. They are already um what you call it? Pre-done. You just you make the sauce, put the sauce on, you know what I mean? That's it. And you don't gotta boil them. The no boil kind. That's what I was trying to say, is the no boil. No boil kind. Okay. So let's put the cheese up. This is all the, the dairy, cheese and mascarpone. Okay, that's because I like that. That's what I buy, okay? Hold the line, please. Thank you. We're going to put everything away. To make the day go faster, okay? Because Lord knows I got a lot of stuff. Oh, I got some jello in here. Y'all want some jello? I got a couple. I got a couple, two, three left. Strawberry. I think this strawberry. Sugar. Sugar free jello. It'd be so good. Let me get a spoon. The dishwasher, because that's why I had washed the spoon. This is the biggest spoon I got, Jesus. This is um sugar free jello. It's delicious. Okay. Let's keep going. I bought a lot of stuff. I bought a lot of stuff. Never go to the supermarket when you're hungry. Fresh cod filet. Fresh Arctic char filet. Fresh yellowtail snapper filet. Fresh catfish filet. Now I believe that we ought to we ought to figure out which one of these we finna fry. I believe we should do that. I believe we should get a bowl. That's what I believe. I believe we ought to get a bowl. And I believe in this bowl, we ought to put in here one filet of something and another filet of something else. You see what I'm saying? And then what I probably should do is, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator, but I'm going to put it in a bowl in the refrigerator. Or maybe I use this bowl to cook it and this bowl to store it. So this is catfish, never frozen, always fresh. Catfish filet. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Catfish filet. Let's do a catfish and let's do a, a yellow snapper. A yellow tail snapper. Why not? Look how beautiful that is. Oh. Dude, this is yellow tail snapper. They have the best fish at the farm. I'm sorry. This is a cod filet. An Arctic char. It's like a cross between, it's like a milder version of salmon, I guess. Okay? It's delicious, though. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see what else we got, because we're going to cook this up in one minute. Thank you. Might as well fry a piece of fish while I'm on live, huh? Might as well. Mmm. These are my favorite. This is a golden beet. Okay, matter of fact, let me cut the oven on so I can start roasting some vegetables. I picked up golden beets, Brussels sprouts. Do y'all like golden beets? They're so good. These are red onions. You know, I gotta have my red onion. What I always tell you, get whatever's on sale. I'm gonna roast the beets so I can have them ready. I like to have them ready for salad and stuff. Okay, speaking of salad, they have the spinach, this baby spinach. They had this on, it was four dollars. I couldn't leave this in the store, it was four dollars. It's a lot of spinach. We're gonna be very regular over the next couple days. But this, we might use some of this now. Let's do that. Why don't we put some spinach 
make a little situation. Why don't we cook a little? We might as well cook some of it. Hell, we got plenty of it. Don't we? How much we got? A lot. It's already pre-washed, ready to go. Okay, that's spinach, fresh spinach. Smoothies, sautés, whatever, okay? Put this in the refrigerator. Hold the line, please. Okay, that's spinach. Oh, I buy all these all the time. This is some organic baby spinach. This is some organic baby kale. And this is a little spring mix. You know how you can throw a salad together real fast when you have this? You know how the salad be looking real pretty? You just grab these, okay? I like these a lot. They're very easy, very simple. And uh, you know, I like it. Thank you. Let me give it to these Brussels sprouts. You know, then they have celery. You gotta buy celery. What we gonna do with this, I don't know yet, okay? But we're going to do something with it. Amen? Just because we have it, we're going to figure out what to do with the, with, the, with the celery. Okay? We can juice it if we want to. Can we? We can juice the celery. Let me move my spinach out the way. Okay, let's see what else we got. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to roast these right now. They have, these are tomatoes. They have on the vine yellow and orange tomatoes. I said we gotta roast these with olive oil, salt, and cracked pepper, and a little garlic maybe. We're gonna roast those real fast. Avocados, okay, avocados. And they have the best juicy, the juiciest looking avocados at the farmer's market. Ain't that beautiful? Look at that, that is an avocado for your ass right there, baby, that's an avocado. I like avocados. I keep them cold though. I like to keep mine cold. Okay, we don't need this. What's this? Oh, this is rice wine vinegar because I be I be running low on rice wine vinegar. And then this is a basmati rice. See how that rice come? This is three dollars and eighty one cent for two pounds of basmati rice. I like that. Don't you like that? That's amazing. Hold on one second. Let me put this in the, I mean, in the thing, in the pantry. Okay, let's see what else we got. <clears throat> oh, they had the most beautiful purple broccolini. Hey, I have to buy it, okay? They have purple broccolini. This is, uh, these are leeks, okay, these are leeks. Scallions, because we use those for everything. And a little fresh dill, huh? A little fresh dill. I figured this week we probably do a little something with some chicken, dill, chicken, tzatziki, pita, creamy, something. I don't know, I'm not too sure, but you know, I said, listen, we ain't got to figure it out right now. We got plenty of time. We'll figure it out as time go along, okay? We'll figure that part out. Okay? And what I like to do is I like to store my, what you call it, my deal in a container. Not a container, in a um in a ziploc. We use this one. I wrap it in four, I mean in paper towel and just put it in a a food bag like that and then throw that in the refrigerator. And that'll keep it fresh. That'll keep it fresh for a while. Although we're gonna use it real fast, okay? We're gonna use it up. Okay, let's see what oh let me put this away. This is, uh, what's this? Oh, this is the broccoli. Okay, let me show you what else I got. Okay. I bought quite a few things. Uh, 
Okay. I got quite a few things. Guess who won't be hungry? Oh, look at these. Now they had Eric Colbert. Eric Colbert are little French green beans. They had the French green beans. I couldn't leave the French green beans in the grocery store. I had to buy the French green beans. So they have the French green beans. This is a orange cauliflower. Come on, man. Orange cauliflower. We're going to use that. And then, let's see. Cucumber. A lot of cucumbers. And, you know, I had two orange cauliflower. I never buy just one. Don't ask me why. I always buy more than one. Hold on one second. I'm putting it up. Okay, let's see what else we got. Oh, more pasta. Okay, they have more pasta. And then I picked up some currants and they had tart cherries that were dry. Do you like a tart cherry? You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about things that have to go in a salad. And you know how sometimes in a salad you want contrast and you want texture? Um, the tart, mmm, mmm, mmm. The tart cherries will give you, it's like having a craisin almost, you know? And these are currants. Currants are like the cousin of a raisin, of a grape. They're smaller and to me a little bit more sweeter. So if you like raisins, you'll love currants. If you don't like raisins, try currants. They're delicious. And they flush you out, okay? They flush you out real good, okay? They flush you out real good. I picked up some kale for obvious reasons. Juice thing. But I'm addicted to a sausage and kale pasta. Addicted. Like the pasta with the spicy sausage, with the white wine and the butter, and the red pepper flakes, with the Parmesan cheese and the pecorino and the kit. Addicted. I can't get enough. Sorry. Addicted, I tell you. Addicted. It's so good. Okay, let me see what else I have. Hold on. I got some more stuff over here. Okay. Oh. Okay. Speaking of spicy sausage, about a couple pounds of spicy sausage. I don't know what we're gonna do with this, but we're gonna pick up something out. Okay. This is a certified Angus beef. Ribeye. Let me show you these ribeyes. Let me show you these ribeyes. These bad boys. Look at that. Do you see that? Look at that. Ooh! Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're going to be eating good with that one. Okay. So those are ribeyes. Couple of those. Thank you. These are um, center cut loin pork chops, but with the bone in them. So just like the ribeye, but except it's a pork chop. Let me show you. Look, just like a ribeye, but it's pork chop. Okay, all right. And you know, I don't be liking the fried olds. These too fancy for frying. I like to just take these and grill these either on the grill outside or on the stove, you know, be honest with you, in their purest form. And then I picked up some, um, they make their own smoked turkey tails at the farmer's market. 
So I picked up a few smoked turkey tails and some, did I get collard greens or did I get, I don't know if I got collard greens or if I got cabbage. Either one, this is going into somebody's instant pot. Amen? Amen. going into somebody's instant pot with something. Okay, let's see what this is. Oh, bell peppers, lots of ginger, green tomato, beautiful cabbage. I got two of them. Because, you know, cabbage you can eat all day long. And you will get full, but you know, it ain't no calories. And some jalapenos, just because, I don't know, don't we need jalapenos for something? Put these to the side, because I'm gonna fry some green tomatoes for TikTok later on. Okay, let me figure out what to put this in, hold on. I got a place right here. One, two cabbages. Let's see what else we got. Some grocery haul, huh? Oh, you know what this is? This is pureed tomato. Okay? So, you know, I'm all about making my own sauce sometimes. And this is the tomato that's pureed in a bottle. Okay? I did pick up some more Duke's mayonnaise, more Duke's. And then this is uh, black beans, organic, organic black beans, and then tomato paste. It's not many things I eat out of a can, but beans and tomatoes, I eat those out of a can. Okay, beans and tomatoes, I eat out of a can. Not so much other stuff. Okay. Look what we got. These were sun-dried tomato strips that they had. Panko breadcrumbs, because I'm almost out of my other container. And then, not that I needed a bunch. Oh, yellow yellow peas for split pea soup. Maybe half of the, the smoked turkey will go for split pea soup. I don't know, we'll see. But, I was low on the essentials. Granulated onion powder, granulated garlic powder, dried fennel, black pepper, okay? I was low on the essentials, and so I needed to replenish the stock, okay? These are the essentials, you gotta have these. Okay, let me grab my bags. Let me see what else I got. Okay, we shopped, did we not? I told you. I told you. I got a bunch of stuff. I was low. we got strawberries they have fresh strawberries so we gotta pick I picked up some fresh strawberries uh, a little banana never hurt nobody right beautiful bananas okay we're not running out of black pepper anytime soon red pepper flakes and granulated garlic Okay, I'm loaded. Okay, that's my refrigerator cutting up because the door opened. I'll be over there in a second. Okay, more pasta. This is Rick Rigatoni. 
But I got rigatoni twice, cause why not? You need it for stuff, right? Don't you need pasta for stuff? I think I don't know what you need it for, but you need it. Okay, let's see. Oh, Alabama cornmeal, okay, old-fashioned. Alabama, this is from Hartford, Alabama, okay, 36344, Alabama white cornmeal. And then the last time I made grits, y'all kept saying, um, those not grits, those not grits. They sell a yellow grit and they sell a white grit. I mix them together. Okay. I mix them together. They don't, they don't, ain't no difference in taste, but they sell both. They sell a yellow grit at the farmer's market and they sell a white one. Okay. You know why? Because you got yellow corn and you got white corn. Every southern kitchen need to have a little piece of grit. And I just put them right here. That way, guess what? Whenever I'm ready for grits, grab them, boom, ready to go, okay? We good? All right. $3. Do not ask me why I need five pounds of carrots besides juicing it with my oranges, okay? But it was $3, okay? We finna have carrots on everything. It was $3. We finna eat carrots this week. I don't know what they going in, but we finna eat them. Carrot cake or something. I don't even eat carrot cake. I don't even eat carrot cake. I hate carrot cake as a matter of fact. All right, let's see what else we got. I'm down to my last few bags. Okay. Ugh. These are my last bags. Okay. They had orange for nine dollars, okay? So why not pick up an orange? Don't we need oranges for stuff? Right? I don't know. I just feel like we need oranges for something. So the oranges, it was nine dollars. For all them oranges, we can make um orange chicken. We could juice it with our carrots. You know, you gotta have options, people. People, you have to have options, okay? Mm, and they perfectly sweet. Mm, okay. Extra virgin olive oil. Parmesan Romano stuffed olives. I've never even heard of such a thing before. But these are olives stuffed with Parmesan Romano cheese. How bad could this be? Let's find out. Let's find out. Child, that's good. Mm. That's good. Mm. 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 That's good. 
Oh, it's gonna be good. Parmesan Romano cheese stuffed olives. Come on now. We can need that in the store. And then they have this is lemon citrus pitted olives. I said a lemon citrus and a parmesan. Okay, let me see. This is lemon citrus. It's lemony, and there's a lemon down there. Okay, that's gonna be good on everything. Okay, that's gonna be good on everything. Okay, and one. Plum sauce. Capers. Garlic stuffed olives. Okay, garlic stuffed olives. Okay. Why not? Let's see what else we got. Mmm. Turn of greens. And collard green. I couldn't decide. So I got both. A room. Regular broccolini. Fuji apples. More Brussels sprouts. More ginger. Asparagus. Bell pepper. My other golden beets, shallots, and turmeric. Okay. Now, let me find something to put this turmeric in. Hold on, y'all. The turmeric, I like a knob of it in the morning with black pepper for the juice, personally. All right, let's cook something, huh? I wasn't even gonna cook live. I was just put the groceries up, but I am, I done got kinda hungry talking to y'all. See, turmeric, I done got kinda hungry. Fool around with y'all. Let's see if we can throw something together real fast. You hungry? Let's make a snack. Huh? Oh, y'all got plenty of vegetables. Plenty of vegetables. I mean, how could you, how can you go in there, see all this stuff, and not want to buy everything? I don't know how you do that. I have no discipline. None. I have like zero discipline. All right, let's cook something. Let's see what we're gonna do. 
Let me get these uh, tomatoes in the oven, first of all. I got an oven on 350. You know what? I might cut the oven down to 300. Let's do that. That oven can go down to 300 because I want to slow roast these tomatoes. Royal Convection 300 stuff. I'm actually going to slow roast the tomatoes because I happen to like that a lot. You know, a little slow roast action on the tomatoes. Let me get a bowl. Put these in. Let's do that real fast. So these are tomatoes that are still on the vine. These are yellow and um, orange tomatoes. And I just picked up a bunch of them because I like them. I'm not really a fan of a tomato unless it's cooked or it's treated in some way. Like, you know, a relish, a chow chow, a salsa, something like that. But, Ain't no reason why we can't slow roast these. You know what I mean? Ain't no reason why we can't slow roast these in the oven for a little bit. And then we can really use them. Because when you slow roast them, it just sort of intensifies the flavor, you know? So I got a sheet tray, seal pack, all right? Or parchment paper, either one. And then... With the tomatoes, I'm just gonna cut them into wedges. Like that, oh wait. Let's get the rest of them. I'm just cutting them into wedges. Right? And if you ever have some tomatoes that are like on their way out the door, you know how sometimes they be like a little soft, they don't be as firm anymore? This is a great way. Cause then what you can do with the tomatoes is, uh, Put them in salads, use them in uh, sautés, put them in pasta, you know, whatever you want. And this is a great way to use up tomatoes. And I like to just have them hanging around in the fridge. I kind of feel like this. Sometimes if you have like the food that you want readily available, it will prevent you from going to Chick-fil-A or ordering Uber Eats or running to Popeyes if it's like readily available, you know what I'm saying? So this kind of helps out a little bit. Uh, you don't have to use uh, yellow and orange if you don't want to, but these they had down to um, the farmer's market. And so I said, let us use it, okay? So tomatoes, I got a little more room for a few more hot. I got a room for a few. They smell amazing too. In my backyard, I'm growing a variety of tomato called sun sugar tomato. I'm not even a, the biggest tomato fan like that, but those sun sugar tomatoes, I literally can eat those with just a pinch of salt. That's it. They're so effing delicious sun sugar I don't see them in a grocery store I think you just have to buy them like buy the seeds and grow your own okay so a wedge each each tomato gives me uh, eight pieces so as you can see I've got plenty of tomato to go around right spread them out over your sheet tray Give them some room to work. Let's do uh, olive oil. Extra virgin, of course. Soak them good. All right, these are tomatoes going in the oven, so olive oil. And then a healthy pinch of salt and pepper. Uh, I haven't cooked in my kitchen in a while, so the question is, where is everything? Okay, here's some salt. Salt them good now. 
okay? And then I have some, this is um, coarse, coarse cracked peppercorn. Why not? Coarse cracked peppercorn, right? On there. Let's throw on a few pinches of red pepper flake for good measure. Just a pinch for a little spicy kick. You know, not that spicy, but a little, you know, how you doing? A little kick. Ain't nothing wrong with a little kick. Sometimes your kid be the kick. Kick them. Shoot. Okay. And I got a little bit of balsamic vinegar I'm going to add on top. What the great thing about balsamic is when balsamic cooks down, it turns so sweet and delicious. So this will be a nice little nod to the acidity and sweetness that's already on uh, inside the tomato. We don't put the tomato already. Okay, so here you go. And just spread them out. See that? Just spread them out. Tomatoes, salt, pepper, pepper flake, uh, a little bit of good little olive oil. That's it. That's it. Okay. Into an oven, 300 degrees. We're going to slow roast these. Now, these will take, uh, they'll take a while. Hour and some change. A good two hours to slow roast. So, this is great to do. On a Sunday afternoon or a lazy Saturday. Okay. Now before we cook this other stuff, um, let me find out they get with my foil. Hold on, y'all gotta find my, my aluminum foil. Oh, here you go. Uh I'm also gonna do these beats. I love a beat. Not that kind of beat. Golden beats. I love a golden beat. They are Fantastic. If you don't like beets, because I don't think I like regular beets. You know the regular um purple, whatever color they are? I'm not really sure I like those. But these I love. The golden beets, because when you roast them, they turn so sweet, almost like candy. It's it's crazy how sweet they turn. So I just wrap each one into some foil like this. See, real simple. And these, uh, the oven's at 300 degrees, so these are also gonna take a good hour and some change until they're nice and tender, but it's so worth it. I swear to you, it is so freaking worth it to do this, okay? Sheet tray. in the oven too. All right, uh, hey. we need to cook, don't we? I'm about to make this up as I go along. There is no recipe for any of what I'm about to make up. I literally am about to make this up on the fly for you guys, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is core out one of these tomatoes or two of these tomatoes, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna core out two of these tomatoes and then I'm gonna cut them down so that I can chop them up. Like this. So a little diced tomato action. Yes. So far, so good, huh? Easy. And I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the way I enjoy cooking. Everything is fresh, no preservatives. Everything is like in its almost purest form. I love it. Okay, and I'm just using these tomatoes because they were sitting in front of me. Why not use them? Why not cut them up? My knife is a little dull. Hold on one second. My knife is a little on the dull side, and I'm, it's not making cutting my tomatoes any fun. Knife sharpener. I'm sure I got it from Amazon. I know y'all gonna ask me, 
where you get it from, I'm sure I got it from Amazon. You guys always ask me, um, what kind of knives do you use? A cheap one, and I'll just keep it sharpened. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's part, that's so much better. A cheap one, I'll just keep it sharpened. I'm sure I got it from Amazon. Please do not inbox me asking me where it came from. Okay, it came from Amazon. I think. It might, you know, it might have come from a, what's that store called? Bad, bad, my okay. cake, I don't know. Okay. Let's get a skillet warm, huh? Why don't we get a skillet together? And I have these tomatoes. I'm also going to cut up a little shallot. Why? Because it's sitting in front of me. Don't ask me. I don't know. Okay? If you don't have shallots, you don't have to use. You can use an onion. Red onion, yellow onion, Spanish onion, Italian onion. No matter. African-American onion. It's just sitting in front of me, so. <clears throat> this is what a shallot looks like. It's like a small onion. You do it the same way you do an onion. You cut off both sides. You need to peel off the little outer situation. And now it's like an onion. But it's more milder than a regular onion. It's also kind of fancy, you know, to be like, what are we doing? Cooking with shallots. Ooh, shallots, ooh. Ooh, that's fancy. I know. It sure is. Okay, all right, and then we just cut these down to size. Let's use the whole shallot. And they work the same way onions work. Okay. So we have shallot and tomato. Let's get, let's get this in the skillet. Well, let's get some oil down. Okay. Let's get some oil together. Let's go. Pray for me. <laughs> okay, a little bit of olive oil. All right. This thing is super hot, so I'm cutting it down low. And in go the shallots and the tomato. Okay. All right. We have to, we got this. Hold the press. Normally, normally, I buy garlic already peeled. I know. <laughs> I know. But Instacart bought me like 10 cloves of garlic like this, of whole garlic. And you know, I just don't believe in making no mess out of it. So, and this is the reason, this is the reason why I buy it already cut, already peeled, because I hate peeling garlic. It is one of the things in life I do not like at all. Okay? It's peeling garlic. It is the absolute worst. But, if you just put, oh Jesus, if you just put the back of your knife on the garlic, and gently smash it, they pop out the skins like nobody's business. Okay? But I hate peeling garlic. It gets all over your hands. Okay? Just not a fan. And there's all these like um, tools. You get a garlic press, all that, whatever. I don't have a garlic press. They say you put them in a bowl and you shake it. Anybody got time for all of that? Okay. Now, I always add way too much garlic to my food, but that's just because I like to add garlic to the food. Okay. 
Is there even a such thing as too much garlic? No, there isn't. There's no such thing as you put too much garlic in. No, who cares? There's no such thing. Okay? All right. Chopped garlic, all of it, in with the tomato and the shallot. All right, this is what we got. So you just sauteing down some of the vegetables. I'm gonna add in some salt. A little bit of salt and then I need some pepper, some cracked pepper in this one. pepper flakes because why not because we can okay so that's going to be the base of our sauce why don't we make some grits huh why don't we make some grits so I'm going to put some water on not that much not that much water And then I'm gonna season the water with a little bit of chicken bouillon. Okay. So I just take any chicken bouillon that's not Goya. Okay? Any chicken bouillon that's not Goya. Okay? You can add your chicken bouillon to your water. Play with me if you want to. Play with me. Give me a spoon, okay? That made me upset. All right, you want the tomatoes to do what they're doing. They get it nice and like caramelized, all this good stuff. Meanwhile, let's talk about this fish right fast. I bought a bunch. I bought catfish and yellowtail snapper. So I'm just going to use both because we can. The only thing about the catfish is that sometimes the catfish fillets are so large. Like this is a big ass piece of catfish. So I like to cut the catfish um, either in half or in thirds. And in this situation, thirds will have to work because this is a humongous piece of catfish. Just determine how big, you know. But if you outside, if you outside with the fryer and all that, I mean, go for it. Even this is a little too big for me, but I'm gonna cook it whole anyway. Okay. We about to season this, but let's deglaze. Let's deglaze our pan real fast so our tomatoes. Don't burn any white wine, okay? This is just some Chardonnay I had sitting on the side, okay? It's not an expensive Chardonnay, it's cupcake Chardonnay. It's about $9, okay? A little bit of white wine in the bottom of this pan. Because what you're going to do is infuse great flavor um, into that with the white wine. Now here's what I like to do is this is just me. You can do wine and stock. I'm gonna do wine with a, with a little bit of bouillon, okay? That way I get the flavor of like slow cooked flavor, but it ain't gonna take all day to reduce that, okay? All right, let's get some herbs out the cabinet. Let's get some, uh, Onion powder, herbs they throw on, garlic powder, and let's grab a little bit of dry parsley. All right, let's season that up real good. Okay, I wish you could smell it. 
Now this ain't nothing. I just I'm throwing this together. You feel me? I'm throwing this together. Okay, a little bit of herbs de Provence or Italian seasoning. All right, a little bit of onion powder. A little bit of garlic powder and some parsley. Dry. Let me show you what this looks like. Let me show you what the base of this looks like. So this is just tomato, shallot, garlic, um, seasonings, olive oil. That's all this is as the base of this sauce. Now, to me, what makes this sauce amazing, and I just made this up as I'm going along, some heavy cream from somebody's farm, okay? Heavy cream, I'm sorry, we got to do it. Heavy cream from somebody's farm. You put that sauce Right on there like that. Put you about a cup, cup and a half of heavy cream in there, okay? And let's hit it with some more cracked black pepper. Okay, now we're gonna let that sit on the back of the stove on low and just marry and do its thing. That's a very simple white wine cream sauce, okay? Real simple, you ain't gotta do that much work on that, okay? Put that on the back of the stove. I'm putting it on low, on the back of the stove. Okay, meanwhile, let me get a skillet together for our fish. All right. And let's put our grits on. Now, here's the thing about the grits you got to understand. Okay? We got that water season good with the grits. You put you a few grits in, stir. Stir, stir. That's the name of the game. Okay? With the grits. I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but I don't want to mess my grits up. So give me a second, okay? I don't want to mess the grits up. And these grits can be... Whatever you like. They could be uh, the white grits or the yellow grits. Or mix them together and you have an erasure grits. It's up to you. It don't matter. Whatever your heart is feeling, okay? We're going to stir these real good. And nothing is in here but the water. What I say in there? Water and the, um, what you call it? The chicken bouillon, Okay? Put my oil on for my fish. Oh, let's cut this fire down on these grits. So they can poke my eye out. Hold on. Put the fire all the way down on the grits. Okay, we're gonna stir every so often. That way we don't mess up with the grits. Okay. Fish. Let's season it. Garlic powder. Onion powder. That's all we need from this, okay? And then we can put the onion powder and the garlic powder and the parsley and the herbs they pour on back in the, in the cap, okay? All right, all right. And just stir the grits, make sure the grits ain't burning. Grits over here in the back. Oh, no, no. Uh, do you mind if I put a little bit of smoked paprika in the sauce? You don't mind, do you? I didn't think you did. Can put a little smoked paprika in the sauce. And I'm putting my grits on low. I, I didn't think you was gonna really care. Okay, now let me get some more seasoning for these grits. I mean, for this fish. Hold on. We need some of this. Some of this. A little bit of this. And some of this. Okay. Now you can season this with whatever you like. Okay. 
But after we put the onion and the garlic, I got a little bit of slap your mama. Don't slap her for real. Slap your mama not that salty. So you, you it's okay with that. Okay? Tony Saturis, salty. And he gonna make you sneeze. Cover your nose and put you a little bit of that in there. Okay? It'll make you sneeze good. Okay? A little bit of... <coughs> I told you. Hold on. It got me. It got me. <coughs> it got me. I don't know what they put in that Tony Saturis boy, but that thing... <coughs> that thing know it be lethal, don't it? <coughs> Woo! What they put in... <coughs> That's how you know it's the real Tony Saturis, okay? If you ain't sneezing and coughing, it ain't real. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm just stirring my grits. Ah. That Tony's a get you, man. I don't have no buttermilk, but I got heavy cream from somebody's farm. It's gonna work just the same. Okay, let me get my cornmeal out. This is some Alabama white cornmeal. So we're gonna stir up all the seasonings on here real good. We're gonna pull in cornmeal. Now normally, uh, you see me, I'll fry, I'll fry with flour. <coughs> it just depends on what day it is, you know? Some days I fry with flour, some days I fry with cornmeal. It just depends. And today I feel like a cornmeal frying kind of day. So I'm gonna mix up my cornmeal and my fish. This, this is off the cuff, by the way. This ain't even no real situation. Make sure our grease is hot. It is. And then in go our cornmeal crusted catfish. Look at that. See that? And then let's throw in a piece of this snapper while we at it. I got room for one more, hold on. Ah, a little piece of catfish, I like that. Okay, now our, uh, our, what you call it is, is crying out for help. Our grits, they crying out for help, Lord. All right, it's time to do something. What are we gonna do? Let me show you. Let me show you how we hook these grits up. Okay, look at this. This don't look like nothing, do it. That look a mess. That ain't what we eat. First thing first, I never met a grit that couldn't use a little bit of butter, okay? So into the grits, we add a little bit of butter, okay? And we stir in that butter to help get it emulsified. Because right now, the grits are begging for moisture. <clears throat> All right. Next up on the moisture list, is mascarpone cheese. I can't get it open. Though. If you don't have mascarpone cheese, cream cheese works well, but there's something about this mascarpone that just really sit well with my spirit. I like it a lot. Okay, so into the pot with the grits and the butter. See, it's starting to loosen up on you. Let's add in some mascarpone cheese. Couple, of, couple of tablespoons of that. Okay, give that a stir. Uh huh. Let that go. Hold the line. In addition to the butter and the what you call it, I got a little piece of heavy cream. 
okay? The butter and the cream cheese, heavy cream. A little bit of that. Just to sort of loosen, oh, is it raining again? Jesus. Just to loosen everything up. See, look, when you do that, let me show you what happens. When you use this method, like let it dry out and then re, like reconstitute, look at that. You see the difference now in those grits? When you add in all that good stuff, look at that. Oh, I know. And we need one more thing in the grits. A little bit of that Parmesan cheese, huh? A little bit of that Parmesan cheese in here. Just a handful or so of grated, fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Why not? We could do that, can't we? Yeah, we can. Yes, we can. Well, we just did. No matter if we can do it or not, we just did. Okay, it's done. Let me get some tongs and flip the fish. Because, you know, the fish don't take that long. It don't take that long to cook. Now, let me do this. I need, uh, this is what I need. I need, oh, here's a bowl right here. Perfect. You see this sauce that we have cooking? First of all, it's a little too loose. Let's thicken it a little bit, huh? With a little cornstarch and water. Let's do that. I just want the right consistency, that's all. I just want the right consistency on the sauce. Hold on. Let this stay heated up. Cornstarch and water. A little cornstarch slurry. That's if you don't have time to cook it down. I don't have time. Okay? I don't have time. We busy. But as soon as we do that, let me stir this up. Okay, perfect. As soon as you add this in, look at this. Look at the sauce. Look at the consistency of the sauce. Look how thick it is. As soon as we do that. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Okay. I did that because I'm going to use the same pot, okay, to saute this spinach. <laughs> okay. Same pot. Okay, we got fish. Do you, you know I put all catfish in here, right? I meant to put, I meant to put, uh, I meant to put half uh, catfish and then some yellowtail snapper in there, but I forgot. I must have did all catfish. Maybe the Lord wanted me to do all catfish. I don't know. I'm just flipping it one last time. Uh, in this skillet, why don't we do some butter instead of olive oil? Why don't we do a little butter in this skillet? Ooh, it's really raining. Get this fish out where it's been done burnt up. And y'all be like, I told you he couldn't cook. The boy don't know how to fry fish. He ain't nobody's cook. Let me get this fish out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. All right. With the, um, I'm cutting everything off now. With the spinning, now you already know what's going to happen. Gross pay and net pay, okay? So I'm going to put a little salt and pepper in the butter. And a little pinch of red pepper flake. And then I'm just going to put the spinach in, but I just want to wilt it. Like, I don't want it to be like, I don't want to kill it. You know what I mean? So I'm going to cut the heat off. I'm going to cut the heat off. Take the spinach off the heat. You know, I just want to wilt it. I don't want it to be like I'm cooking it all the way through. Just a little wilt situation and be good. See? Just this. All right. Toss it in that butter. And then that's it. Huh? Are we done? Let's go. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. It's a good thing I got a lot of sauce. I almost lost my sauce, Lord. Ain't that a mess? The devil is busy. Okay. Let me grab some scallion. Let's put it together. Oh, I almost lost my stuff. The devil is busy. But God is busy, y'all. I thought I did all this work. Wouldn't that be a mess? I thought I sat up here and did all this work and then lost all my stuff. All right, these are just some scallions. If you have parsley, you can use parsley. Let me get a um a bowl to put this together. Let's see what I got. Let's see what I got. Oh, I got one of these greens and gravy bowls. Huh? I got a whole greens and gravy bowl, Doc. Okay, look at our grits. See what we did with the grits? You see how they thicker than a snicker, but nice and creamy? You see that? Okay. Put your grits on the bottom. Like this, you see. This is fish and grits, you feel me? All right, put your grits on the bottom. Let's take our wilted spinach that will it to nothing. And let's throw that wilted spinach on top, like that. Then, why don't we grab our catfish? I'm good with one piece. I'm good with one piece. I ain't even gonna be that greedy, you feel me? I'm good with a piece. Let's take that sauce, the tomato, yellow tomatoes with um, shallots and garlic, herbs de Provence, Chardonnay, let's call it a Chardonnay cream sauce. We're just gonna put that right on top. We're gonna leave a little bit of the fried fish exposed so you can see it, right? Let's get rid of this. All right, we'll take some of these um, scallions that we sliced and we'll throw the scallions on top. So it looks good, right? Then let's go with a tap of black pepper and a tap of, oh, let's do Old Bay. We could do Old Bay or we could do Cajun, either one. But Old Bay will give us what we need. Let's do a tap of Old Bay like that. See? Now, let's go camera to camera so we could see uh, what we working with. You feel me? Okay, here we go. So this is um, Facebook, my Facebook um, fan page. What's up, y'all? Okay, this is uh, TikTok. You hungry? Let's make a snack, okay? 
This is uh, my personal Facebook right here. See that? And this is my Instagram. What up, Instagram? Okay, this is uh, Periscope. And this is YouTube. How you doing, YouTube? Okay, there you go. Now don't ask me for a recipe. I ain't got one. I made this up. <laughs> I made this up on the fly. Okay, the You Hungry Let's Make a Snack aprons, you can get these right now by going to shopdariuscooks.com. Okay, bow your head, let's say grace. Grace. All right, let me get into some of these grits with the sauce and the wilted spinach situation. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all right with me. Huh? Wow. Say it backwards. Wow. That is perfect. Like the grits are creamy and cheesy. And that white wine sauce on here is like the perfect vehicle. With the grip. Mm. Let me get some of this fried catfish. Farm raised. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know. Let me see. Mm. You know what it is? It's that cornmeal crust, baby. It's that cornmeal crust on it. Uh-uh. Mm. 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 Listen. I don't know what it's called. We gotta call this something. Fish and grits, I guess. But um, as you can see, it's very simple to do. And um, I just did it for you live on the fly. For recipes like this, you know where to go. The website, DariusCooks.tv. Listen, two things I want to tell you, like I always do. Food is my life. Life is my food. Until next time, I want to wish you happy cooking and happy eating from my heart to yours. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Now this is good. Now this. Bye y'all. Mm. 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 It's so good. All right. Bye YouTube. Love you.